Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one we will be creating the world's smallest Hackintosh. Ever since I've seen the MacBook Nano concepts and people Hackintoshing their netbooks in the mid to late 2000s, I wanted to try something like this myself. And now I've got this, a GPD Pocket 2, a very capable mini laptop that looks a bit like a MacBook. Sadly, it originally runs Windows, but we are here to change that. So accompany me on this journey to create the world's smallest Hackintosh. Let's start at the device. I've done a video on this and its older sibling, which I will link in the description. But in short, it is a mini laptop from Gamepad Digital, or GPD for short. The cool thing about this is that they use an Intel Core M CPU. The same CPU which can be found in some of the 12 inch MacBooks. This will enable us to install macOS on here, turning the GPD Pocket into a MacBook Nano of sorts. The other fact making this very interesting are the looks. GPD were very obviously inspired by Apple on the design here. While the first generation GPD Pocket kind of reminds me of the first unibody MacBook Pros, like these 2011 MacBooks we can see here. The second generation reminds me more of the MacBook Air. It has the same curvature, making it look way slimmer than it actually is. The keyboard, or more specifically the function row, kind of reminds me of the MacBook Pro with touch bar, as we can see here, although it has no touch functionality. All in all, a very sleek but unoriginal design. But that is perfect for what we want to achieve today. Okay, let's talk about the installation. I wanted to install the beta version of macOS Sonoma. So what I did is to first download the installer and then copy it onto a USB drive. The links will be of course in the description. So my idea was to install macOS on this microSD card here, so I can switch easily between Windows, which is installed on the device's eMMC, and the SD card, with macOS on it. The problem was, for some reason, the installer always crashed when I tried to install on a microSD card. I have no idea why, but I couldn't do it. I tried many different microSD cards and many different versions of macOS, starting from Monterey, and none of them worked. So in the end, I tried to install it on my M.2 SSD here. This is the M.2 SSD with 512 gigabytes of storage. The only problem was that it was constantly overheating while I was installing macOS on it. And uh, so the installer crashed as well. And my solution to this is the following. Brace yourself because it gets weird. I used these two rubber bands and this syrup, this citron vert, syrup which was in my fridge so it was cold and then i just um, used the rubber bands to fix the ssd on here which actually allowed it to complete the installation so uh, yeah syrup for the win i guess at the end it worked and i could boot macOS from here but that was only the beginning the version of macOS i got working on here was monterey and that was because someone online already hosted a GitHub repository where I had uh, access to an EFI that allowed me to boot Monterey. So once I saw, okay, the whole process is working and I could boot macOS and uh, in this case Monterey, I tried to update it myself. So it was an EFI made with OpenCore. I updated OpenCore, I updated all of the packages and then I installed uh, macOS Sonoma. And it also worked. So uh, once I had that working, I uh, imaged macOS over from the SSD here to my microSD card and also copied uh, the EFI folder over. And now I have macOS Sonoma on the microSD card here, which leaves me with a very sleek way to dual boot. So to demonstrate, let's power on the GPD Pocket. So as you've just heard, the uh, macOS boot chime is implemented in OpenCore and it works with the internal speakers here. So we select macOS here 
And then uh, we have to wait, of course, because the micro SD card is obviously not very fast. But once Mac OS actually loaded, um, I think it's, it's quite usable. The only problem I noticed with uh, Sonoma in comparison to Monterey is that I couldn't get Wi-Fi to work. If you want to have Wi-Fi, I guess, use Monterey. I will put my EFI with all uh, the kecks I used on GitHub. So um, you can tinker with that. I will put a link in the description. But for now, as you can see, it actually works. The keyboard works and the whole device works. So now we actually have a mini MacBook. Maybe you watched my video where I installed macOS Tiger and Windows XP on this super small notebook here. Um, but this one is from 2004. And um, yeah, now we have the same thing, even smaller, but with uh, new versions of both macOS and Windows. So now that I have macOS up and running here, I wanted to do a bit of a comparison between other Apple devices I own and put them head to head in a few benchmarks. I installed Geekbench, Cinebench and Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and ran that on various devices. As you can see here in this chart, of course the GPD Pocket is the slowest. I mean, who would have thought? It's running an operating system it was never designed for and it's generally a very, very small and low power device. But what I found interesting is if you look between the uh, 2017 MacBook Air, which is the top model, it's a, a built to order model with the i7, in comparison to the GPD Pocket, the difference is not that far, especially in GPU, if you uh, compare the Geekbench scores and also in CPU performance. Of course, the MacBook Pro absolutely storms it and um, the Apple Silicon devices leave it in the dust. But for me that was very interesting to see that this device can actually compete with some semi-modern uh, MacBooks. For Geekbench there's also the Geekbench browser where you can compare your results to uh, other devices. So what I did is I compared the scores from the GPD Pocket to other devices in their list. And for a single core, we're on par with a, a late 2012 iMac. But on the other hand, for a multi-core, we were uh, in between a 13-inch 2015 MacBook Air and a 13-inch 2017 MacBook Air using the i5 option. So that's pretty much where I would put this device um, performance-wise, around a 2015 to 2017 MacBook Air. But that said, it is actually very usable. Um, on Monterey I used it for a few days because it had Wi-Fi. Um, on Sonoma I only used it uh, to, to do this video here. Um, but on both operating systems it works very well for day-to-day uh, -day tasks like writing emails or watching YouTube. The only thing that's a bit of a bummer is of course the uh, disk speed. We're getting around 80 megabytes uh, write and 90 megabytes read using the micro SD card, but I mean, that was to be expected. And the uh, internal EMMC in this device um, that's running Windows is also not very fast, so I don't think that's a problem. So yeah, I would say that was a big success. I always wanted to have a um, MacBook Nano um, as I've said in the intro, once I saw all these people hacking toshing their uh, netbooks and making like concepts, what will Apple do next with a MacBook Nano and stuff like that, I always wanted to have a device like this. And now uh, with the GPD Pocket, I can. And that's just great to me. So the last thing that's missing from here is of course, the Apple logo. So give me a second while I will install this Apple logo. 15 minutes later. I've seen better, I've seen worse. <laughs> but yeah, now it kind of looks like a modern MacBook. So yeah, I hope you like my concept of a MacBook Nano. If you want to see more tech shenanigans like this, consider subscribing, leave a like on the video, and I'll see you next time.